It's a me, Mario. Am I am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Uh, no, I I feel like if we're gonna do it, it's here we go today on banquet at the Plum Dumpster. Here we go. No. Here we go. Better. How drab, how dull critique can be It's begging and pleading for apathy The good, the bad, the in-between And nothing is everyone's cup of tea No time to waste, there's things to do But Jared and Eric are happy to They'll suffer the worst of films for you So enter the strangest of banquet rooms Hello! And welcome Hello. to Banquet at the Flum Dumpster My name is Eric Tish. My name is Jared Aronoff, and, and this is a dumpster full of flums. <laughs> yes, and the one in particular today that we are feasting upon is one that we've wanted to watch for a very long time. A very long time. We've been meaning to watch this for I don't even know how long, and I cannot wait. I think that there was, there was one time where we were like, oh... We've got like we've got time for like an hour and forty minute movie exactly, and then it was like, oh, how much is this? It's like an hour forty four. You're like, uh, no, I guess uh, not. <laughs> I guess we'll just watch a David Dakota movie. Oh no, David Dakota. Uh, we need to do a full episode on David Dakota one day, yes. but that's beside the point. Because today, we're watching Super Mario Brothers from nineteen ninety three, a movie. As old as I am. Um, older than me. Older than you. I am so excited. I, I, quite, en- I quite enjoy uh, Super Mario Brothers games. I don't know about you. Yeah. Like, I mean, I- if I have to pick one, it's Mario Kart. Any, any of the Mario Karts, like mostly Double Dash, like uh, the one on the Switch, too. The, the one on the Switch is a good one. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, of the, the 3D, like, open-world platformers, mm. like the Sunshine or the Odyssey. Oh, I did play Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah, that... Yeah. That, anything that was on the GameCube, that was yeah, my system the, growing up. Yeah. The GameCube, that was also my system growing up. Yeah. Uh, Mario Party. I recently... All of the oh, Mario Parties. All of the Mario Parties. Yeah. Um, how to lose friends in how 60 lose. minutes or less. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about you. I played that uh, re-release of the three, um, the three three D Mario's recently, and I remembered why I never finished Super Mario sixty four. Oh, yeah, I that game is <laughs> that game is rough. It I... is rough, and nobody talks about how rough it is. But it is such a cruel, cruel experience. I think that any one of the basic Mario games where you're just, yeah, you're going along a platform, jumping over stuff, hitting bricks, those games, they always have Mm. three or four levels. It's not always the castles, but usually the castles that they, they have set up to absorb you into the game for hours because the rest of them, they, they lull you, they lull you Mm. into thinking you're good at the game and then they destroy your soul. I am never good at these games. I think that that's a thing to say right off the bat, <laughs> especially considering I just said on the internet in one of our very first episodes that I did not like Super Mario 64. I'm very bad at video games. Yeah. Um, it, it, might, it might be a mistake to say that on the <laughs> internet. It, we, may, we may lose uh, potential, potential <laughs> Super Mario 64 fans. I, especially since we're, we're advertising, we're watching the Mario movie. This is, this is gonna f- f- gut all the Mario fans. They're like, I want to see what they say about it. <laughs> um, that sounds a little optimistic, Eric. All the Mario fans <laughs> across the world. Hello, people. We're gonna go from viral. Across the world. We're gonna go viral. Uh, I hope we have a Patreon set up by then. <laughs> yeah. All the countries covered in the song Big Enough are watching us today, listening oh, to us, of course. We also need to do a full episode just on the song Big Enough. Ugh. But we're, uh, we're getting off topic. Um, We'd often do that. Because the, the thing that's interesting about Mario is yeah. that it's, it's kind of a product that's unique to video games. 
because the the world of Super Mario Brothers is almost entirely constructed around facilitating unique gameplay experiences rather than telling a distinct story in its own right. Like, a couple of years ago, uh, I did a little bit of research into some of the scholarship that has been written around video games. Mm. Uh, and there's one scholar uh, who whose name, uh, I think, was Franz Myra, uh, who distinguished between... Uh, what he called the the shell and the core of a game, um, like the shell being the the representational aspects of the text, the graphics, the story, the symbols, signifiers mm -hmm. uh, that allow a player to make meaning out of the experience, and the core being the you know the the basic structure of the gameplay mechanics. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so if you start asking questions like, why is Mario a plumber? Why is the villain a giant turtle? Why is this world full of mushrooms everywhere? Why is the princess named after a fruit? These questions don't have answers. And that's because they're not supposed to. Mm. These are just visual indicators that are practically pulled out of a hat to create a shell so that you as the player can experience you know jumping from platform to platform and that's kind of where the meaning of the world of mario begins and ends so i'm really interested in how uh a movie which you know, is a is a medium that is a lot more invested in, uh, you know, constructing more uh, meaningful experiences out of its narrative. Will choose to approach uh, these kind of essential pieces of iconography. It's it's also like in the basic Mario game, like what we're talking about in 1993, they hadn't gotten mm -hmm. into Sunshine. They hadn't gotten into Odyssey. They, no. I think probably maybe had the first Mario Kart. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't have a strong conception of Mario history off the top of but my head. This was just when he was going out and like fighting Donkey Kong, I think. Like, no, th I think this would have been a little bit after that. This would have been like. Are we going to get uh, are we going to get somebody in a terrible Bowser costume? That's oh, my absolutely. Big question. Absolutely. Oh, I, um, so. I think I, I think I've actually I, th I think I've seen trailers or screenshots of Bowser in this movie. And <sighs> it's, it, he's not even a turtle. Um, oh, my God. I think. Uh, but it's it's I, I think that off the top of my head, uh, this would have been around like Super NES era. I think it would have been like Super Mario World would okay. have been the most recent one. I'm. Uh, excuse me while I Google this, actually. We always like to do research, not always before, but we want, we talk about things. Um, so Super Mario World was 1990, so that would have been three years before this. Okay, yeah. yeah. It had any Mario Karts come out yet? Can we expect a, uh, you know, all, all of the characters in Mario Kart, or all the characters in the Mario World put aside their differences and just race around a track? Uh, stuff Super at each Mario other? Kart. Super Mario Kart was nineteen ninety two. Okay, so that yeah. could have that's that's in that's production in the in in yeah. It, it's like just within the threshold of like they could reference it. Yeah, but they probably won't. And Mario Kart probably was not the like the the main association that people had with Mario no. at that time. And and let's also just just look at the fact that this was in 1993. Mario has mm -hmm. evolved in every sort of way since then. We've had all these other properties. We've had Smash Bros have come out. All like Luigi's had his own side hustle, getting mansions. No more movies after this one. 
There it, is actually one in development. Uh, yeah, but this is this is like in our lifetime, there has yeah. not been another one. I think that speaks to how much of a failure this this might be. I that that is what makes me excited. Yeah. Uh, and this this did, for the record, I also just googled this. This did come out after the Super Mario Bros. TV show. Oh. Uh, that was in the um, very early nineties, ninety one. This one is saying eighty nine. There might be. Okay. Okay, so just in the shadow ones. of Cop Rock. Yeah, just, oh. There's another thing that we need to do a full <laughs> episode about. Yeah. But I think we should circle back around and talk about our expectations for Super Mario Bros. from 1993. Uh, because I think that I'm actually going to really like this one. Even though it's from the 90s. That is true. I do tend to have whatever the opposite of a soft spot is for bad movies from the 90s. I don't know what it is. I always find them so exhausting. Um, I, I'm i hoping that this falls into the, the kind of 90s cool as ice, you know, mm-hmm. um, kind of vibe. Because, like, that's that's what I want from this. Like, I I, I think that that's what this could bring. And it's what I'm excited for. I think that I, I think that my like the safest prediction that we can make about the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie is that it will be unrelentingly 90s. Yes. Like just, Cool as Ice. <laughs> like oh my goodness, we also need to do a whole episode just on Cool as Ice. But we Jared won't just have... making notes about all these future episodes while we record. An episode. Um, I'm not writing any of this down. Um, yeah, we're great at research. Um, we're great. <laughs> don't I, don't make that a running gag. <laughs> I I'm gonna say my expectations is that um, first of all, I've already said I want a Bowser that that when he comes onto the screen, I laugh. I I want just constant, like, I don't know if I want... I, I know that you've said that you might have seen screenshots of this, and you're not even a turtle. I don't know if I want someone in a suit, or if I want, like, Scooby-Doo's, like, shaggy... No, not sc- Scrappy-Doo's transformation kind of CGI for him. Like, from the end of Scooby-Doo 2002, the yeah, yeah, action. Yeah, like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two directions that would most please me with how they go with Bowser. Because that's the thing that I'm most looking forward to. I have spent my whole life not knowing what Bowser looks like in the Super Mario Brothers movie. You've you've eliminated half the fun for yourself by looking at those screenshots. I looked at them like a decade ago. Let's just blame teenage Jared for one of his many mistakes. I did make a lot of mistakes. And do you know what one of those mistakes was? Arson? It was... it. Okay, well, yes, there's that. But another one of those mistakes was to not watch the Super Mario Bros. movie from 1993. And mm-hmm. today, we are going to rectify that. Oh, I'm so excited. Me too. Okay. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go! of your seat in a moment your host will return with the fruits of their suffering every last thought that is currently buffering too the time has arrived their opinions will now debut all right okay (laughs) that was something i I I'm I'm gonna come right out of the gate and say I enjoyed that. Oh yeah, no this that was this is by far the best movie we've seen so far on this. Like since we've been we've, doing the podcast, at least since since we've been recording episodes of this podcast, uh, I don't know what order we'll release them in. But for as long as we've been recording episodes of this podcast, I this is this one I am oh. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my. Um This is 
one of the best worst movies I think I've ever seen. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, I think I would. I this was this was a lot of fun. Uh, I think I think we need to do something a little bit different with this episode because we enjoyed this yeah. uh, this film so much. I think that what we need to do is we need to have at least a section of where we're not spoiling it for our viewers. Yeah, we'll, we, yeah, yeah. I think we'll do a first section where we're not going to spoil it because we need you to watch this and be. Like, if you haven't seen this and you want to uh-huh. get the full experience, like, hit, go watch it, please. Yeah. Don't, like, take our word for it. It is an experience. Yeah. Um, it is a bizarrely surreal experience. Yeah. It, it is incredibly odd. Uh, can, we, can we dive right in and talk about how uh, this is not a Mario movie and nobody involved in making this movie even played a Mario ma- game. No, like. they, 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 they not only have they like, they don't like anyone involved in making this movie does not want to be making a Mario movie. And that is evident. Yeah. And like you say, none of them have probably even played a Mario game. I, um, I'm not even convinced that they wanted to make a kid's movie. Like, no, I don't think, I think that what happened here was somebody in the studio said, okay, we're making a kid's movie. And the director was like, I am making art. Thank you very much. (laughs) Well, somebody, somebody commissioned this as a Mario movie and whoever the director is, we should look them up. But whoever the director is went, okay. I'll make this movie that you want me to make, but what's a Mario? Yes. And then decided, I don't actually need to know what a Mario is. Yeah, I was like, wait, so, wait, what's a Mario? Actually, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm going to figure that out for myself. The, this, it, it takes on this really bizarre, I don't know what it is, be, because it treats all of the Super Mario-isms as like, checklist items to tick off yeah and then just like does its own thing around that and the result is a movie that if you're looking for the true mario experience you will be disappointed and infuriated oh yeah and if you're looking for Something that isn't a Mario experience, you will come away going, what the hell did I just watch? That was so odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I um, I do want to... I did look up who the directors were, um, and there are two directors. Um, two. Two. Two people. Like, it's a partner, like, team, and um, they've never directed anything ever again this was just like no they've done like music videos they like they started doing music videos they continued doing music videos after this but i think that it makes sense that this is somebody who did music videos because Mm. it feels like a music video in a lot of ways the pacing is incredibly fast Mm -hmm. like so much happens in such short spans of time that it is rather disorienting in Mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. And I think, yeah. So like basic premise in this, like it, not a spoiler, but the basic premise is you got the two Brooklyn plumbers, Mario and Luigi, and they encounter this interdimensional rift that takes them into this bizarro, kingdom where you it's it's not any mario world you would ever recognize no no it's like uh it's like the the mushroom kingdom is very thoroughly reimagined Mm -hmm. um and by reimagined i mean it's uh it's like Mad Mario Max. meets Mad Max, yeah. Yeah, it's like I, I have I have written down it's like a Mad Max subway depot. <laughs> like it's 
it... <laughs> yeah, and not, uh, not, to be clear, not like Mad Max Fair Road, more like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah. Like the steampunk 80s Mad Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <sighs> it's it's incredible <laughs> how it's... how much this is... Not a Mario movie. It's not. It's not a Mario movie. It's really. It's really not. Like I also want to just take a moment to appreciate the fact that for like eighty percent of the movie, Mario did like was not the hero. They just put it squarely on Luigi. They were like, "Yeah, this is Luigi's movie." Yeah, this wasn't even. This wasn't even Mario's story. No, Mario was the the. B character yeah. in his own movie. Yeah. It, well, no, like, it was it, Super Mario Bros. So they were... Yeah. They, it's just, you expect, you expect it to be Mario and not the guy who wanders terrified around a mansion screaming, Mario! <gasps> like, okay, that was like a full 10 years yeah, after this, Yeah, no, but this, that's, though. that's how Luigi is usually seen. Well, that's how you, Luigi is seen now. Bear in mind... The only source material that this film had was like eight to sixteen bit, <laughs> you know, video game sprites, and maybe like a little bit of information from the instruction manual. There was not <laughs> intensive lore around Mario. There still is not intensive lore, but like th- they this... they had a lot of room to take creative license, and I think. I think, I might be wrong about this, but I think that this movie did have a small piece of influence over future Mario canon. I think that this is the first time that the Mario brothers are referred to as Mario Mario and Luigi Mario, but I do not know if that is a fact. I don't either. I did notice that, though, um, and thought it was... Like, they played it like it was the first time that joke had ever been made. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. But do I we, think, I think we... we need to get into spoilers to talk about yeah, I was just now. about. I was just about to ask, do we have anything else to... I don't think... I don't have anything else to say. We need to go into the details of we why need to we love delve this movie. In. Um, okay. So this is this is your warning, dear Spoiler listener. Spoiler alert. We are diving into spoilers. If you want to experience the Super Mario Bros. 1993 movie fresh, turn off this podcast now. Come back later. I will only be a little bit sad about it. Um, okay. So first of all. First of all. I, I need to talk about, I came into this. Wanting to see Bowser. I made that so very you wanna, clear in the introduction. I wanted to see what they would do with Bowser. So you want to start off our At the very section end. <laughs> by talking about the evil, egg-sucking son of a snake, <laughs> yes. King Koopa himself. Yeah. Um, for, for 95% of this movie, it's just Dennis Hopper camping it up in what was clearly a role that he knew he could take and just drink on set for. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There's, there's, there there was no sign of what we know as Bowser until like he gets hit with a de-evolution ray, which is, which is, it sounds insane, but (laughs) it's a running thing that there's just this, Bizarre, like you, you, you have these human people who are apparently descended humanoid. from humanoid people humanoid. who are descended from dinosaurs in this mushroom kingdom, and there's this technology to turn them back into dinosaurs. Well, to either up their evolution or down their evolution. Mm-hmm. Um. Devolve I, I wanna, them or evolve them. Yes. I want to talk about uh, Dennis Hopper's performance a little bit more mm-hmm. because I I felt like I saw a lot of parallels between the characterization of Koopa 
uh, not even King Koopa. Koopa is all his name is in this movie. And Dennis Hopper's character in the film Blue Velvet, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure only came out a couple of years earlier. And I, I watched I think it was that movie. 86. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a couple more than a couple of years earlier. And it, it's a very disturbing character that he plays in Blue Velvet. And he plays almost the exact same character here in a kid's movie. <laughs> Air quotes around the words kid's movie. Yeah. Um, on, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Koopa's wife, Lena, whoever that is. Uh, that's my favorite Super Mario <laughs> Brothers character. Not Slime Lena. Bucket? Oh, <laughs> Slime Bucket is my other favorite Super Mario Brothers character. I feel seen as a Mario fan, knowing that the Super Mario Brothers 1993 movie incorporated such undervalued characters as Slime Bucket, as Lena, Bowser's wife, yep. and Big Bertha. Yep. But, but Lena was, of course, played by Fiona Shaw, who somebody then looked at this performance and said, y- I'm making a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to play the evil aunt, Petunia. And I have to assume that the casting director of Killing Eve, when casting Carolyn... <laughs> was thinking the same thing. Not 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 her performances in Harry Potter or anything in between. That casting director saw saw what she did in Super Mario Brothers and said, "Yes, you are my Carolyn." Um and I I I believe that's that's that is true in my heart. Here at Banquet at the Flum Dumpster, <laughs> we find humor by combing through the IMDb pages of the actors in our oh, movies. I didn't need I to. Also think, I'm a big fan also, of Fiona Shaw. I think that this I, is one of her best performances. <laughs> I also think uh, that the actor who plays Big Bertha, um, when uh, this, this, her role in Super Mario Brothers was looked at very closely when the producers of Pushing Daisies wanted to cast a bit part in that one episode. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, what else can we say about the ways that this film uses the Mario existing universe as like a bucket list to be ticked off? Okay. Because Toad, to Toad at... makes a cameo. Toad makes a cameo yeah. as a as a guitar playing hipster who is immediately arrested because guitars are illegal in mm-hmm. the Mushroom Kingdom. They they um, did. I I I wanted this in in the introduction, and they did have a Mario Kart scene. They <laughs> did. I mean, it it Including, felt more like no no. It it even had the part where you go off the map. <laughs> <laughs> You try to take a shortcut, and you're like, this was probably a shortcut, and then it's not. And then Lakitu has to, re- like, rescue you. <laughs> they basically had that scene, just minus the, like, the cloud showing up and fishing you out of the water or whatever you're going into. And it was also uh, shot nothing like a Mario Kart session and was instead framed like an action scene from Mad Max. Yes, it was still a Mario Kart scene, and I'm sticking by that. Um, I mean, it was a Mario Kart scene in the sense that it had Mario in a car. <laughs> and I think that anything after that no, is a bit no. of a stretch. It's al- and it also had somebody shooting fireballs to try to <laughs> stop him. It had more Mario Kart elements than you're giving it credit for. <laughs> I think that you're giving it more credit than it deserves, though, because I don't think that the Mario Kart game from, what did we decide it was, like, 91, 92? Yeah, yeah, it came I, out just before, and Nintendo I don't think might that it have said, a... hey, we're, we know you're making this movie, put in <laughs> this scene, because <laughs> they that is all Nintendo had to give I this movie. That... All Nintendo could have said in this movie was, here's a list of things we want, and they were like, 
okay. But the director says, but no, I have a vision of a story. I think story. that you're overselling it, though. I think that you're overselling it because I... I don't think that there was a fire power up in the original Mario Kart, and I think that like Mario Kart at the time of the first game's release was not, as I said in the introduction, a big part of the Mario image. It's not like they also paused this movie at one point to go off and play tennis. <laughs> um. I also want to reflect on the fact that there was, like, not one, but two scenes involving a Goomba dance party. Yeah. Which I was not expecting, but was so into. We needed it. We needed that so much. We needed much. that. Um, it was just, they had a part where they, they had a bunch of Goombas, who were the de-evolved versions of the humans, um... <laughs> And they, they like, Mario and Luigi tricked them into dancing. And then they found out, oh. No, it was Luigi. It was Luigi. Yeah, yeah. Mario was skeptical. Oh, that's true. Luigi was the one who decided to trick them into dancing by just picking them up by the sides and swaying them back and forth. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't notice that Luigi was in the elevator with them. That's really what they should have done in that Captain America scene. In the yeah. Captain America scene, when he was surrounded by all those people who wanted to kill him in the elevator, if he mm. just made that a dance party, that yeah. it just would have made that scene so much better. Marvel fans, come at me. I, <laughs> I, we're, I we're, we're getting really totally we're getting really controversial on the internet in one of the early episodes of this podcast. Yeah. Not only have I said that I found Super Mario sixty four to be underwhelming. But you've now said, Marvel fans, come at me. You yeah. are asking for us to get canceled. I am. I very much am. And if, if, if I'm going down, if I'm already going down... Oh, no. <laughs> I want to comment on the fact that there was not a peach in this movie. And that that is... Like, for fans of this movie, which I know there are so many, <laughs> I know that they've all stuck around because they've already seen the movie and they're fans. That was a travesty. Um, I can't help but feel as though Peach was in an earlier draft of the script. Yeah, I feel and like then the they fact decided... that they went over for Daisy the whole time, they were looking yeah. for Daisy, that, that should have been Peach. Well, I think that what happened was that it was Peach in an early draft of the script. And then they realized that, you know, Mario is a completed character. He does not have any more actualization that he needs to realize for himself. And that Luigi, as the younger brother, needs to come into his own. And so Luigi was the one who needed the love interest. And Luigi was the one who needed to learn how to plumb. And Luigi was the one who needed to save the princess in the end. And everybody knows that Princess Peach is Mario's gal. And so if, if <laughs> Luigi got with Peach in the end, that would cause mass fan uproar. It's true. And, and I, I do very much respect the directors slash screenwriters for not letting the the property they're adapting get in the way of telling the story they wanted to tell. They really didn't. <laughs> they really didn't pay attention at all to anything. But at that the they same time but at the same time they paid a little bit too much attention. Because <laughs> the 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 awkward attempts to squeeze in like Toad and Yoshi who in this in this incarnation of Yoshi has a killer instinct, uh, like it 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 does it does bring this movie down where it I I feel like oh yeah every I don't know I I think that like at the same time though I think that if I just gave this creative team free reign to make the weird weird thing that they wanted to make 
it would be less interesting because part of what makes this movie such a magical experience is the dissonance <laughs> of how it 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 keeps trying to tell me that it's a Mario movie but has no interest in anything to do with Mario. Oh yeah. No, I I I will go as far as to say that every thing about this movie that was at all related to Mario made it worse. Mm-hmm. Like the the elements that were complete like I I want to say like more than half of the movie was just not like they didn't have any intention of making a Mario movie and they were just like this is the movie we wanted to make. This was a screenplay we already had, and we've just changed the names. No, that I don't was like fifty percent of the movie. I don't get that impression at all. Really? I, I think I think that this was a movie that was built from the ground up to be a Mario movie, oh, and just existed so. at a point in time when you know the the gritty, edgy, uh, grimy aesthetic was what was cool. And this had to be what was cool. It had to be like a Mario movie for big kids because if it was like a, a fun, happy, you know, flowery, colorful Mario movie, then like the kids at the time would, who would have been the, the core demographic would have looked at that and gone like, that's for someone younger than me. And I think that that's what the studio was approaching this as. Um, I think that this was built from the ground up to be a Mario movie. I just think that nobody involved with it had any interest in making a Mario movie. But I do want to ask you, Eric, following up from that last comment that you made, would you want to watch a version of this movie that had the skin of Mario and his friends and... Princess Daisy and Toad and Yoshi and Koopa and etc. Would you want to watch a version of this movie with that skin removed and replaced with something different? No, I think it would have been a f- like very forgettable 90s movie, but mm-hmm. I feel like that's what they wanted to make. And instead, we get this masterpiece, but I do think that like it's the it's the dissonance that you mentioned that is what makes it not work in the right way. Yeah. And it's yeah. I, what, what you're saying about it being like the right kind of kids movie. I think that a lot of the inspiration has to have come from like the, I think all three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies had just been released before this movie was made. And mm. I can see a lot of influence in that. That's interesting. Like that, I, that is, is not impossible. It is very much in line with the tone and, like, just generally how they approach adapting something to for early 90s kids. And I think that the, a lot of what didn't work about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies also didn't work here, but in the <laughs> right way. <laughs> Uh, including the random dance sequences. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a random dance sequence. You can't. Dance you, no, like, I, I, I also think that the very best use of the Mario canon, um, there is one scene where, well, it's, it's foreshadowed a bunch, where he has a little wind-up bomb. Yes. No, the the, the fungus, the sentient fungus yes. produces a bob bomb yeah. several times and then eventually Mario picks it up. Yeah. And when he finally does it, everybody in the entire mushroom kingdom is scared of the bob bomb. They know what it is, and Mario just winds it and it does a little journey and eventually <laughs> saves the day. But after like twenty minutes. After like twenty minutes. And it is it's just seeing the part where he very dramatically winds up <laughs> this clearly toy bomb. Like, it's... I, I, I want people to know that it is not, like, in the regular Mario games where it's, like, nearly the size of Mario. It's, like, the size of his fingers. Like, mm-hmm. 
he's just winding up this tiny bit bomb. He puts it on the ground, and it just takes a few steps, and then just falls into the, the this grate. And you think, okay, that's it for the bomb. But then you see it do its little journey. Keeps and it's walking. just the, the most delightful thing about this whole movie. Ah, that was a truly delightful scene. Yeah, yeah the bomb scene is so long and drawn out that I feel like it was genuinely meant to be suspenseful. Like, I feel like they were actually trying to make you care about what was going to happen to the bomb. <laughs> like... It honestly reminds me of there's a scene in uh, the Hitchcock movie Sabotage where there's this briefcase that travels through the scene and you're following it, but like you're, it's, it's such a long scene that you kind of forget that it's there, but like there's always this tension. You're always like, it could explode at any second. Uh, this was like that, but without that, like, it, it could go off at any time feeling. It's like, you're, you're feeling, like, is this bomb actually important? Like, even if it blows up, will anything happen? And it was important. And something did happen. And speaking of time, I think we are appearing to run out of it. Oh, we are. Uh, So I will ask you, Eric, what do you think we have learned today? I think that we have learned to trust the fungus. Always. Always always trust trust the the fungus. As Luigi says... That's the lesson from today. <sighs> Always trust the fungus. Well, that was uh, Super Mario Brothers from 1993. I have been Jared Aronoff. If you would like to find me on Twitter, you can find me on Twitter at Jared Aronoff. I don't tweet very often, but you, you, can, you can try. I have been Eric Tisch. If you want to find me and you're a Marvel fan, I will be tearing up the track on Mario Kart. <laughs> and you can find me there. Uh, yeah. Uh, you may have heard our theme song, our glorious, glorious theme song composed by Tarquin Alexandra. Uh, you can find her on Twitter at Tark Alexandra, that's T-A-R-Q Alexandra. She is much more active on Twitter, so you might have a better chance with her. Uh, you can also stream her latest EP, A Tyrant's Demise, on Spotify, Apple, or your music platform of choice. Uh, it's great, by the way. It's really great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's and, it for us. Yeah. Thank uh, you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Uh, and... To all of you, I hope you vote. If the concept were to exist that I'm to explain, which it doesn't, in hypothetical terms, every form of art has a bucket, a container to categorize the format and style, the grapes and the rotten, the podcast that you've just consumed, did the work for you, by scraping the bottom.